for you guys in case you need to go through it again. All right, so the first question here, it says, what do you think these Roman numerals are showing? And so what they do is you'll find them at every generation. You always start at the top with Roman numeral one, and then you kind of go down, like you can go up to 15 generations or more, um, but you number each generation. And then you're gonna number all of the individuals in the chart as well. Um, so that you know who you're talking about. You can refer to generation number one, individual number one, and you'll know exactly who you're referring to. The circles and the squares, they represent the different sexes. Circles are for females, squares are for males. And then the shapes being shaded differently are kind of telling you uh, the presence of the allele. The, the ones that are not shaded with a color, those are unaffected or they don't have the trait, they don't carry an allele for the trait. Uh, the ones that are half shaded are gonna be like heterozygous. They're gonna have a capital and a lowercase genotype, for example. So they're gonna be carriers for that trait. They may not display the trait if it's recessive, but they'll be carriers for it. And then the fully shaded square or circle means they have the trait or they have that particular genetic disorder. And they're usually homozygous recessive. It's not always recessive, but many of these situations, they are recessive. So just double check your answers. Like it says here, there's no wrong answers, but helps you kind of get the basic understanding of a pedigree. All right, so we're going to go through and learn all the different parts of a pedigree and how they work. So the circles, like I said before, they represent females, and they're going to be people that have XX chromosomes. The squares are going to represent males, and they will have XY chromosomes. Blanks, uh, the blank shapes that are not shaded, that means they are either normal or unaffected, or they do not have that particular trait. The half shaded is going to represent carriers. Those are people that have one disease allele, uh, but they won't have that particular genetic disorder because they have a dominant normal allele. And then the fully shaded represents the affected people. That means they will have that genetic disorder. Parents are going to be joined by a horizontal line. Um, and then if they have children, they're going to be shown by a vertical line from those parents and then another horizontal with little branches. So you can see there's two daughters and a son um, in this particular uh, generation. And then if any of those children grow up and have partners and have children of their own, you can see there's a horizontal line showing that they are parents. Um, and then if they have children, you're going to see another vertical line coming from them. Each generation is numbered. Starting at the top, you're going to start with Roman numeral one, then two, then three. Um, so you may need to go refresh your memory what the Roman numerals are if you don't know them very well. And then you also number every individual in each generation, but you start, always start at number one from left to right. So this is how you would number all these people. And that way you know who, you can, you, who you're talking about. You can be talking about generation two, individual number three. That's a female, that's a carrier, okay? So like I said, now you can identify this is um, person uh, in generation two, individual number two. And then this one here, so we're at generation two, individual number one. Think about in your mind, which, which individual on here is their sister? How would you identify them as the sister? So 
So this is going to be the sister because they share the same parents. And so that's generation two, individual three. Relationship between generation three, individual number two, that's that person down here at the bottom right, and then generation one, individual two. Think about what their relationship is to each other. So this is going to be the grandfather, and um, specifically it's the maternal grandfather uh, because if you take a look, this individual down here, here's their mom and dad. This mom, her parents are up here, and this is her father, so that's the mom's dad. That's the maternal grandfather. Now think about the relationship between generation two, individual three, and four. What are, how are they related? Or what is their relationship, I should say? So they're married or they're parents um, and they're joined by a horizontal line. They're not always married. I just kind of say it just because that indicates that they're together, but they could be partners or parents we're married, but usually they show them as together and that they would be having children. All right, so now we're going to go through and practice with this information. So here's problem number one. You guys should switch to this slide. On, on your slide, you should have shapes to the left, okay? You're going to construct a pedigree chart for the inheritance of the genetic disorder in this family by dragging the correct shape on top of the description for each person. So starting at the top, generation one, individual number one, that's a carrier male. Remember, males are squares, and if they're a carrier, they're going to be partially shaded. And you have females are going to be circles. If they are normal, if any of the shapes are normal, they're not going to have any shading at all. And if they are described as being affected, that means they are going to be fully shaded because they have uh, both recessive alleles, most likely. I'll give you a minute to move those around. Okay, starting at the top, we have a carrier male. So here's what his shape should look like. Square and half shaded, because he's a carrier. Carrier female, again, if she's a carrier, she's going to be half shaded, and this time it's a circle representing the female. Normal male, if they're normal, they're not going to be shaded. And then we have an affected female, she'll be fully shaded. A carrier male. Again, partially shaded, and he'll be a square. And then the normal female, she won't be shaded at all, and she'll be a circle. And then we have two more normal males, so those are the plain squares. All right, the next one. Cystic fibrosis is a recessive disorder, which means that a person has to have two recessive alleles to have that disorder. People with one disease allele are called carriers. So you're going to construct a pedigree chart for the inheritance of cystic fibrosis in this family by dragging the correct shape on top of the genotype for each person. So this time they're identifying male or female using their sex chromosomes. 
Um, and then they're also using genotypes, the letters, to represent what, what their genotype are. So remember, they're telling you this disease is recessive. So the lowercase letter is representing the cystic fibrosis disease allele. The capital letter is going to be the normal one. And if you need a hint, you can move that pink banner um, to help you complete this, but you're going to use the shapes to the side and you're going to click and drag them on top of where those genotypes are. Okay, so our first one in generation one, individual number one, XX, this is a female, so you're going to use a circle, and they have capital F and lowercase f. So this is a carrier female of cystic fibrosis. And then we have XY and a capital F, lowercase f, that's a male carrier. <clears throat> Neither of these people will be affected by the disease, but they do carry the allele for it. Now looking at the offspring in generation two, individual number one has two capital Fs and they're XY. So that is an unaffected male, not shaded at all. The middle one there, two lowercase Fs, that has two recessive alleles. That means they are going to have the disorder. So they will be fully shaded. And that was XX, so it's a female. The next one is XX, so it's another female and two capital F's, so she will be unaffected and doesn't carry it. And then her partner here, number four, is two lowercase f's. This individual does have the disorder. All right, we're going to stop there. And what I want you all to do is go back into Thursday's folder. You're going to open your exit ticket. and answer the question, because you still have about four minutes before the end of the period. That way you don't have to worry about forgetting to do this. So you're gonna write a postcard to a friend summarizing today's lesson. Uh, in the blue areas where you're typing your couple sentences summary, and then if you wanna make up a name of a friend or put a real friend's name, you can do that as well. Um, so you folks at home, you're allowed to log off and finish your exit ticket, and we'll see you tomorrow.